for David, everybody. So this is actually a story, something happened to me when I was a teenager back in the 70s. I worked at the Neptune Theater at the time. We got the Rocky River Picture Show, which made it a much cooler job. And got a lot of attention on that. But um, we had a manager, <coughs> so UW student who has finished her degree and was quitting as a manager and going off to have a real career. So we had a farewell party for her after work on Saturday, which we all worked till about 2 in the morning at the theater showing the Rocky River Picture Show, so it was going to be a very late night party. That was fine. I lived out in Edmonds, drove all my buddies in when we were working, and I had a friend who invited a cute girl who worked near where he lived along for the party. So I ended up picking him up and their girlfriend up and driving down to the theater and then going to work all day. And we headed off to the party afterwards. And it was a typical party back in the 70s. There was a lot of smoking and drinking. Um, nothing too much beyond that. I was having a good time, a little drunk. And one of the guys, one of the more responsible older guys, wandered over and said, hey Dave, you might want to go check Dave, who's my buddy's also awesome. Just to make it sure confusing. <laughs> he seems to be upset about stuff, so I went outside, and he had like had a big tree limb he had torn off a tree, you know, about eight feet long, and he was kind of bouncing off of the sidewalk, obviously very upset about stuff. And apparently another coworker, Frank, had been hitting on his girlfriend all evening, and just totally driving him crazy. It wasn't prepared to handle it well, so after talking with him for a minute, I realized, okay, not really any good way out of this other than just saying, well, let's call it a party and head home. So I wandered back in. His last words to me as I went in were, just don't let Frank get anywhere near me. So I went back into the house to go get Cindy, who was also drinking, having a good time. And I said, well, it's time to go. And she responded, kind of, oh, what's, what's up? It's too early. The party's just getting started. I said, well, Dave's kind of upset about stuff and figured it's probably easiest if we just go. And that, that didn't go real well. She started getting upset. What's Dave upset about? What's, what's going on? And I didn't quite know how to explain it. And then she ended up in tears, which I couldn't handle that at all. So I ended up having to kind of hold her and comfort her, which felt amazingly good. I was a 16 year old virgin at the time. And she was gorgeous and attractive. And I had to take a short break to run into the bathroom to get sick. But other than that, you know, I came back out of the bathroom and was holding her and just thinking, oh, this just feels so good. I'd totally forgotten about leaving or anything else. And to get out of the way of the bathroom, I kind of lean back against the door on the other side of the wall. And it gets kind of fuzzy from here. I remember kind of falling backwards through the door and my arm, I had to let go of Cindy so I didn't drag her in with me. And my arm sliding along the door trying to grab onto something and failing to get purchase. And then lying flat out and then continuing to fall as I'm looking up at my feet. What I didn't realize was it was the door to the stairwell. Oh. So I was falling down a flight of stairs, I went halfway down and then reversed, and I hit my head on the ledge in the turnaround, right? But next thing I remember is I'm back at the top of the stairs, and Pam, it's her farewell party, she tended to be excitable. She's going, oh my god, oh my god, he's going to die, we have to get him to the hospital, oh my god. And then Pete, who's you know, the other guy who's fairly calm and rational, said, oh, He's going to be fine, no problem. And I'm thinking, God, I hope he's okay. I wonder what they're talking about. Damn, my head feels funny. And I kind of reached back here, and it was just this huge gaping wound. You know, I could feel all the blood, and like blood all down my hand. I'm like, oh, you know, I think I'm with Pam on this one. I don't think this is going to be okay. We're probably going to have to do something about it. So we had one guy who had never been to a party before, didn't drink, didn't smoke. There weren't a lot of those kids in the 70s. So it was perfect. We had someone who could drive me to the hospital. So and we did have one other girl there who was pretty responsible who kind of said, this is going to feel funny. And she brought a towel over and clamped it against the back of my head to kind of cut down on the bleeding. And that felt kind of indescribable. I was getting dizzy from blood loss by then. And they walked me out to the car, sat me in the car. And then this poor kid, you know, his first party ever, he's like mumbling to himself. I can hear him in the car as he's starting to pull my God, oh my God, he's going to die in the car. He's going to get blood everywhere. My mother is going to kill me. <laughs> but they drove me down to the hospital. I remember staggering over to talk to the kind of a receptionist. They needed insurance information before they'd do anything. Probably about three in the morning by now. So I gave them my parents' phone number. They called them, woke up in the middle of the night. Your son's here with a serious head injury. We need some insurance information. I eventually told this story to my kids, maybe cleaned up a little, and told them if they ever did that to me, they'd be. But anyway, um, 
And they took me back, shot me full of stuff. They wanted to keep me conscious, right? So I don't know what they gave me, but I no longer felt tired or like I was going to pass out at all. I felt you know, wired and spacey. But they stitched up. It took like 32 stitches. They had to stitch the inner wound closed and then stitch the outer wound. And, and then I was informed I couldn't take any showers or wash my hair for like five days. I was already a big sweaty dude, so I was going to be unpleasant as hell. <laughs> but whatever. They got me out of there. I was fine. They took me back to the house. So I have to kind of rewind a little bit to what happened. I went down the stairs. Pete said he heard this smash and just assumed that it was Dave tearing the wall of the house open to get out Frank or something. But it was just me <laughs> smashing my head open. <clears throat> the next thing, Cindy runs through the house going, oh my God, oh my God, I've killed him. She looked down and saw me lying there with a puddle of blood spreading around my head. And she ran out of the house and disappeared. Missed Dave, I'm not sure, ran the wrong way or something. Eventually, Dave came back into the house. What the hell? Where's the ride? You know, we're supposed to be leaving. Oh, well, Dave's in the hospital, and Cindy ran out thinking she killed him. So Frank and Dave kind of made up and went out looking for her, trying to figure out where the heck she had ran off to in the neighborhood. And that's about where it was. I came back, and I'm like, okay, I don't know what they gave me, but I'm not sleeping for a day, so it's probably time for me to go. And they're all, no, 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 you can't drive in this condition, there's no way you can leave, you got to go to bed. So they made me lie down in a bed and there's just no way I was sleeping. So I was lying there staring at the roof thinking, you know, maybe half hour, an hour I can get up and leave and they won't mind. But then I hear the door open and Cindy came in and I could hear her voice out there as they're talking. And then she came in to check on me to see how I was doing. She was very concerned, very cute. She sat down on the side of the bed, you know, how are you doing? And it occurred to me that, you know, ashamed of this now that I had the world's biggest free pass <laughs> so I ended up you know cuddling up with her and we ended up lying down on the bed together you know we didn't go real far but we went you know, certainly further than we should have especially when Dave got back from looking for her and I heard the voice but before we could really react they're oh yeah they're in the room and he stepped in so it went downhill rapidly from there he was very upset but, again, I had the ultimate free pass, right? You can't go beat on your friend who has a head injury, right? So he had to just pretty much get over it and leave. So Frank drove him home. So then uh, after that, I figured they probably would finally let us leave. So Cindy and I got up and walked out of the house and waved goodbye to everybody, and I drove her home. Didn't lose my virginity or anything, but I did get her phone number, so at least I got a second. <laughs> did you? So, anyway, that's my story. <laughs> Hmm? Do you still talk? Do you do um, good friends with Dave. Not